welcome as we gather on this Wednesday of Holy Week. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, suffered at human hands and endured the shame of the cross. Grant that we may walk in the way of his cross and find it the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from John's Gospel, the 13th chapter. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon of Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him, and Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving that piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. And when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify in himself and will glorify him at once. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. Well, this Wednesday of Holy Week, it has long been known as Spy Wednesday, and it was all of that because of this passage that we just heard, this passage about how Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, betrayed Jesus and handed him over to the religious leaders of the day. And as soon as you heard that, how many of you thought to yourself, well, yeah, that makes sense. Of course Judas was a spy. We all know Judas's actions, but we never really know what's going on in his heart or in his head. Now, there are some say who, that Judas had been spying on Jesus the entire time that they were together, that from the very beginning, Judas was looking for a way to bring Jesus down because he was uh, jealous of, of all of the attention that Jesus was getting for himself, and especially after he had just ridden into Jerusalem on Sunday so, and so triumphantly hailed as king, and that Judas therefore just wanted that all for himself. There are others who say that Judas was looking for a way to overthrow the Romans and they saw and that Judas saw Jesus as a means to an end. Uh, some think that the theory uh, with that theory that, that Ju Judas was going to use the money that he received to help fund the coup that he was about to go up against the Romans. Some say, no, it was, it was about the money, but Judas just wanted all of that money for himself, and that he saw Jesus as a meal ticket, and he wanted to make a fast silver coin before the whole thing went sideways. I mean, why else would he have complained so strongly about the woman who had washed Jesus' feet with oil and said, oh, we should have sold that oil and given the money to the poor, when actually they thought he wanted to just keep it for himself. But verse 27 kind of refutes all of that, doesn't it? After Judas received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. I mean, how can we argue with that? If Satan enters into the fellow, what else can the poor guy do but be evil? But do you remember what that opening verse of our scripture reading said? After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit, and he declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. 
Jesus knew from the start, at the very least of our reading tonight, that someone was going to betray him, that someone was going to be the bad guy. More likely, Jesus knew that for a long, long time. But the word that we heard there, that word betray, in Greek, the word is parodidomai. And the way that word is most often understood means to hand over. Like if you're in a restaurant and the check comes, you paradidomize your credit card. Or if at that same meal someone asks for the salt, you paradidomize the salt. Or if you get pulled over, you take your driver's license and the registration and you paradidomize it to the officer. You want to know what I think? I think that Jesus, or Jude, excuse me, I think that Judas was a spy, but not for any of these reasons that we said. I think that Judas firmly believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And that Judas wanted to use Jesus to rally the citizenship in order to overthrow the Romans. He was going to parodidomize Jesus, not necessarily for the 30 coins, but to force Jesus' hand. And it wasn't until he realized that Jesus wasn't going to rally the folks after coming in so triumphantly on Sunday, after being hailed as a true king and not that Roman puppet, Herod, no, when Judas realized that Jesus was actually going to allow himself to be murdered, that's when he needed to change his plans and to paradidomai Jesus to the religious leaders. Except the disciples who knew nothing of Judas's plans didn't see Judas's actions as parodidomai, they saw them as betrayal. And I don't think that Judas really could see beyond Jesus' death. He didn't think that Jesus was going to allow himself to be killed because no one comes back from the dead. Well, okay, there was that example of Lazarus, but I mean, Jesus did that, and Jesus can't do it if he himself is dead. Judas was looking for action against Rome, and that action very much required a living, breathing, definitely not crucified Jesus. And so in order to force Jesus' hand in his life as a spy, Judas chose to parodidomize Jesus, to push him into action, to cause Jesus to call down those 12 legions of angels that he said that he was able to do so, uh, to show the Romans that the children of Abraham will not be pushed around any longer, and to give the Israelites the one in whom to believe. How many of us, though, are all too often a spy in our own life of faith? I mean, we come to worship, we look around, we see who's there, we, we stand, we sit, we act natural. You know, we smile, we wave at the passing of peace and also with you. Um, but in our heads, we're thinking, I have got so much to get done today. I need to get our taxes finished. The car needs an oil change. We've got to clean up the house before everybody comes over next Sunday. Uh, and even if I do uh, all these things, do I have time to get everything else done that I need to get finish before I go back to work or back to school or wherever I need to go tomorrow. And you know, worship was nice. The music was good today. Pastor said that thing in the sermon that I really liked that I meant to remember, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, and oh, there's that, there's that person that I talk to every now and then. I, I couldn't see you. I can't remember their name for the life of me. Um, but you know what? I'm just going to say, I can't talk right now, and I'm going to sneak out. I'll catch them next time. Are we a spy in our own faith? 
Are we really willing to hand our hearts over to God? If we do hand our hearts over to God, do we honestly expect to get our hearts back unchanged? Do we think God will let us go on life as usual if we give our lives to God? When we come to worship, do we pray our prayers? Do we really live out our faith like it means something to us? Are we actively trying to follow Christ? Isn't it so much easier to just kind of, you know, casually betray Christ, you know, keep to ourselves? Um, you know, God, I'm really thankful that you gave me these gifts and talents, but, you know, I don't really have time right now to do the things that you want me to do. Are we willing to parodidomize our lives to God, to hand ourselves over to God, knowing that if we do so, our lives will be changed? Or would we rather play it safe, stay in the background, hide from the limelight, and then wonder why those 30 pieces of silver feel so heavy? God's blessings to you this holy.